just so you know, you are not required to join the military, but this is, an, this is an informational video for people who are interested in the information. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is Red Fairy Wheel here, and welcome back to another wonderful video where we are interviewing someone from New Jersey today. And so this is a prior cadet. Um, if you would like to introduce yourself. So I'm Christina Orthodoxu. I'm previously from the New Jersey wing. Uh, McGuire Dix Lakehurst is where we're located um, at the McGuire Composite Squadron. Uh, personally, I could say it's the best squadron in New Jersey. Um, we have a really strong cyber team, so. Not that you're biased or anything. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So for those of you who are not familiar, she's wearing a uniform that isn't a cap uniform. So we, we got a Coast Guard Academy cadet with us today, which is super awesome. So we really appreciate you joining us today. And we're excited to hear about your cap experience and going into the Coast Guard Academy experience. Thank you. So let, let's start off with how did you first get involved with Civil Air Patrol? So uh, funny enough, um, a person I go with here uh, as well, another cadet, um, introduced me to Civil Air Patrol in New Jersey. And um, she was like, I do this weekly thing, uh, part of the military, and I think it'd be really good for you. And it wasn't a lot of information, but that was enough to kind of hook me in. It'll be um, good for you. Yes. So um, <laughs> considering that I was 16 and like going to start applications eventually or soon, um, I was like, hey, I think this would really help me. So I got more information, joined her the next week and got to join CAP. And yes, it was really late considering my age, but um, I really enjoyed it and I learned a lot from it. So um, I'm very grateful for that. One thing I will note is it's never too late to join CAP. It's not. If you are older than 18, then you can't really quite be a cadet anymore, but from 12 to 18, you can still join as a cadet. So there are lots of opportunities within the cadet program, like scholarships, NCSAs, which are National Cadet Special Activities, encampment, lots of awesome things that you can do at any age in CAP. Well, n not all the NCSAs, so I guess technically you can't do it at any age. Like going abroad, they're not gonna send a 12 year old abroad. But yeah, so, so yes, you joined when you were 16. This is true but you joined at a good time because you did get to participate in the program and enjoy some of those different things. So what what would you say your cadet experience wise in CAP, like the, the most important activity or opportunity that you got that just kind of influenced you overall? So definitely I would say encampment. Um, I know that most cadets get to hopefully participate in an encampment. And I think personally, like it was a watered down kind of swab summer. So swab summer is like the summer previous to the academy um, at the Coast Guard, at least. Um, I know the other academies had different names for it, um, but I really think that week long experience was like good prep and um, a great experience just as a cadet in Civil Air Patrol to kind of get a taste of what it's gonna be like at an academy with like a rigorous schedule and yes, getting screamed at and following orders, but also working out and um, learning and going to trainings and stuff like that. Like, I think it was very representative and a good example of what to expect at an academy or any training situation like that. Did you get to go as staff or did you only go as a student? No, so unfortunately, <laughs> since I joined at 16, like I only got to go as a cadet and <laughs> the staff were all younger than me so it was kind of odd to think nothing about. wrong with that no not at all but learning their ages later on in the week it was surprising <laughs> for sure because these people are more mature than you would think so you know the people that were screaming at me were two years three years younger than me and that's crazy to think but they were good leaders and I think they did a good job and I learned a lot from encampment and I know the people around me did too. Um, even though some of them struggled more than others, I mm -hmm. think it was a great experience overall. Even though you aren't active in the cadet program anymore, keep in mind if you join before like turning, I think it's before turning 19, you can join between 12 and 18. If you join before turning 19, you can stay a cadet until 21. That's what I did. So just, just as a note for, for you guys, 
but when you go to an academy, you may not necessarily have the availability to be active with CAP anymore. Yeah. It's challenging, right? Like, like, right. tell me about the academy life. Like, what is it like? So I'll give you a basic rundown of kind of like every day. Okay. Um, so what a lot of people don't realize is an academy is basically college, but with the add-in of the military aspect, um, but also a large physical aspect. So every day, um, depending on the day, so on Mondays we wake up, yes, yes, we have Reveille, but not everyone wakes up at Reveille, but we have morning formation at 620 um, and then breakfast as a core. So the entirety of the core eats at the same time because we have a small, we have the smallest academy at about 1200 kids. So we all fit in uh, what's called the word room, which is our cafeteria, if you will. Um, so we eat at 6.20 in the morning on Mondays and then go to classes from 8 to 16. Um, you may have class that whole time. You may not. It all depends on your schedule and what major you are. We only have nine majors here, so it, it varies. It still varies a lot. So um, and then at 16 is everyone's favorite time of day because you get to get out of your uniform and go work out. So um, everyone really enjoys going to their sports after a long day of school. Um, and then depending on the day, you might have a training in the evening. You may have a training in the morning. Um, it all varies based on your class. And if you're freshman, junior, senior, like you, it all depends. Throughout the week, like I said, you can have trainings in the mornings or the evenings. So just factoring that into your daily routine um, sounds like a lot because you have your academics you have to worry about, then your military, so your trainings, but also you have your athletics and you have to maintain high numbers in all of those. So just balancing that is a lot, but if you're busy in high school like I was and a lot of the people that went to, uh, a lot of people that applied here, um, you know, you do a lot of stuff inside and outside of school to get to college and things like that. Um, we're kind of used to the busy schedule and we enjoy it. Um, and like one thing uh, I could definitely say for sure, we, we dread some things. So morning drill is sometimes very tough to wake up for. So on Mondays and Fridays um, during drill season, when it's not freezing cold out like it is now, we get to go out on the parade field, practice drill. And then on Fridays, um, we'll have practice in the morning again. And then in the afternoon, we'll have what's called a regimental review. So we put on a parade um, for it could be for a special event, occasion, person, um, or even just to like, if it's a special weekend, like parents weekend, like we'll have a regimental review. So it's just to show off the core, how, like how we work, how we work and drill. Um, but it also tells like the audience a little bit what, about what we do. So it's, it's a lot to handle during the week, but you make the most of it and you work your butt off. But Would you say you have any free time? <laughs> uh, yes, if you make it and you manage your time correctly. So um, we have to stand duty, um, which is tough, but gives you free time in a sense. So I right now I'm standing duty as a sophomore um, and I'm doing something called library duty officer. So we have people who stand duty in different parts of the academy and um, we all have different jobs, but I, for example, will be sitting here until 11 at night today. So that's hours of time that I, yes, I have a job, but also I have free time to do my homework, do my studying and stuff like that. So it's all balanced and yeah. So in terms of like leadership opportunities, are those pretty limited in terms of what's available because i i know like with my experience in like a core of cadets environment only like specific people were in leadership roles especially like the upper classmen years like junior and senior years so with the coast guard academy would you say there's a lot of leadership opportunities to like get involved with for training or just like in general for sure. So I can go on for hours about that, but um, <laughs> try to make it brief. <laughs> Thank you. So um, as a fourth class, so as a freshman, um, you don't really have any leadership opportunities uh, because you're a freshman and you don't know much about the academy and you're kind of learning your role and trying to just do your job and get through the year because it's really tough because um, they give you a lot of extra collateral duties as a freshman, which make you have a less free time. Um, and sometimes it, it's really frustrating, but 
you work hard, you work really hard as a fourth class. And once you get through that year, things are a lot better. So right now as a sophomore, I have a leadership opportunity of leading the fourth class under me. So everybody has their own division. So I'm a part of a division of about eight people. And then that division is a part of a company. So we're several divisions within a company and we have eight companies within the core. So it goes alpha through hotel and there's a, like eight companies and we're broken down like that and we all have separate jobs. So a division has a job to help like run the core of cadets. So, so, so it's kind of like squadron structure. Yes. And then yes. like individual flights mm -hmm. for exactly. people who may not be able to picture what, <laughs> what you're saying. Okay. Yes, the same exact, same exact idea. So, um, I, as a sophomore right now, have the chance to lead the fourth class in my division under me. And it's my job to be their mentor and to help them through the year with any questions they have or any um, things that they need to learn. Um, and then also my ultimate goal is to help them pass what's called boards. I know people in CAP know what boards are um, or a board is. Um, so as a fourth class, we have to learn a book of knowledge or indoctrination knowledge um, in what's called the running light, which is a little book that you learn throughout your summer coming in. Uh, and then you get quizzed on it through a board at the end of your year. Hmm. So my job as a third class is to help them study for that test, prepare them for that test, and then present them at their board and ensure that I've done everything I could to get them there so that they pass. And um, so that's my primary job right now. Um, as a second class, I will get to lead the core in a different way. Um, <laughs> this coming summer, uh, my job is gonna be what's called a cadre. I know we know what that is. So I get to um, help teach and indoctrinate the incoming swabs. So the incoming freshmen. So that'll be my job this coming summer. And um, the year after that, as a senior, I'll be able to hopefully lead a divo, so lead a division. And that entails like directing them on how to do their jobs and also just being the overall leader of that group and reporting to what's called a master at arms. And then it just keeps going up. So just like any chain of command, we have little leaders within a group and then they just pass up to a higher chain of command. So ultimately we have, um, a regimental commander who's in charge of the core of the entire core of cadets but there's like so many people between me and and her at the moment but everything could be passed up the chain just like we do in civil air patrol and it's it's really cool and there's like i said i could talk about it for hours there's so many leadership opportunities here whether like inside the classroom outside the classroom on the field as a captain or even just like every day like being a leader amongst your peers is a big deal because when you apply for those leadership positions, they want to see that you've worked and worked with other people and understand how to lead. So there's a lot of opportunities, I would say. So what, what made you want to go to the Coast Guard Academy? Was it a little bit of cap? Was it a little bit of just your interest in general? Was it you just, you really want to go find people in boats? <laughs> Funny enough, um, I wanted to go to a military academy since eighth grade. So I found out about it way before CAP. Um, but CAP, I think, definitely helped me want to continue on this path because, yes, in eighth grade, I found out about the academies, but I was also considering um, applying to be, like, a police officer and, like, going through the jobs and, like, how many different opportunities there are in different branches. I was like, this seems, like, more well-suited for me. And then I found out that the academies, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is right up my alley. And then um, I play lacrosse, that's my varsity sport here um, because everyone has to have sports credit of some sort each semester. Um, so my sport is uh, lacrosse. I was recruited to come here for lacrosse. And I think that's honestly how I mainly found out about it. Like I knew that the Coast Guard Academy existed but I was gung ho for West Point for three years. So things change. <laughs> and once I visited the Coast Guard Academy I found that this was way more my speed um, nothing against West Point cadets. It's a great school, great academy. It just didn't suit me as well as this academy did. Um, like people wise, I just feel like our mission is much more humanitarian. So this is going to sound a little dark, but we're a life saving service. Others are a life taking service. So it's just, yes, we're armed and yes, that's a part of our job, but it's just, we have a different, more humanitarian mission than the other academies and other branches do, which I really appreciate. And 
at the end of the day, like I just want to work to help people like every other academy does. And they all graduate officers with great like leaders of character. So that's the ultimate goal. And I think that CAP helped continue to lead me on that path and help my application, I'm, I would I would think, because yes, I didn't have ROTC, JROTC at my school, but CAP really helped um, hammer down like the military aspect. And I was like, okay, I do like this. Like, I do want to do something like this. And then the leadership aspect I, was very helpful because you got to lead in small groups in CAP. And then that directly applied to coming to an academy as well. But also the aeronautics, like I didn't know at the time, but now I'm he that I'm here, I think I will be applying for flight school. So we'll see how that goes and how it ends up. But um, once we graduate, yes, we have the up 80% of us go on a boat, but there's like 10% that go to flight school. And then like another 10% can go cyber. Um, so it all just depends. What would you say is unique about New Jersey wing? Because you were a New Jersey wing cadet. I don't know anything really about New Jersey. I know a couple of things, but like what, what's so special about New Jersey wing? Why should people join the fabulous New Jersey wing? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I can't say I know other squadrons, but I do think that there's a lot of opportunities in New Jersey. So while I was at my squadron, um, I got many different opportunities, um, opened up like, this is one's going to sound odd, but being um, color guard for a funeral. So uh, somebody significant in CAP had passed away and they asked uh, for representatives from each state um, to have like a few um, cadets come and uh, represent the squadron that they come from. So I went to a funeral in Connecticut and met people from Connecticut squadrons. And I actually met one of my classmates who I'm in the same company with, who now goes here because she was applying to the Coast Guard Academy. Um, but just that opportunity to get to do very unique things and like just things like wreaths across America, which I know we all get to work on and stuff like that. But I just think it's a great environment and uh, there's great people there. And I definitely like miss the people on my squadron because they were great people and getting to work with them was a lot of fun. And I know if I got to stay longer, I'd get to hopefully get more leadership positions and work with even more people and organize more things. But also good quick plug from my squadron, since we're on a base, we're on McGuire Dix Lakehurst. Um, we get a lot of opportunities to go see military things all throughout the base. So we had the New Jersey wing encampment I don't know if it's there every year. Um, I have to check that, but New Jersey wing encampment when I was there was on our base as well, but on a completely different part. So I had never seen it before because it's a ginormous base, um, <laughs> but it was a really unique experience and I really enjoyed it. And just knowing that we have those opportunities like open to us was really helpful. And I definitely learned a lot from being in the New Jersey wing, but also getting to interact with other squadrons like that. Are there any additional things that you'd like to share? Come to the Coast Guard Camp. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would say anybody who's interested in or is in CAP now, um, definitely take a look at the academies and take a look at them seriously because they look for many different people in their application process, like from many different backgrounds and um, people who have done a lot of unique things. So there's no harm in ever applying to an academy or anything like that. And if you're interested in doing something in the military, but not academy wise, I would highly recommend applying for ROTC um, as well, just because I did that as well, because I wanted a backup and I was like, Hey, like I really, I want to serve. And if I don't get to do that in an academy, let's do it at ROTC. So just understanding what you want to do, um, and having a plan and backup plans is helpful. So I would say apply to Academy, there's no harm in that, but specifically apply to the Coast Guard Academy because smallest Academy, best people in my opinion. And like I said, yes, only nine majors, but um, I think they're very diverse and that helps us. So I'm a government major. Most of my friends are STEM majors. So I have friends who are civil engineers and mechanical engineers and like marine environmental science majors. So like we have, all kinds of majors. And I just think, like I said, humanitarian mission, really helpful. That's what drew me here. 
Um, another plug, we don't have to have a nomination to get here. So we don't have to get a congressional nomination if you want to come to the Coast Guard Academy. So that's a lot of, like a lot of people are drawn to the, this academy for that reason, because it is very difficult to get that nomination. Um, like for example, I was in the most competitive like county, um, like most competitive district in my state um, applying for West Point to get that nomination. So it can get really tough. And depending on where you are, that's not your fault. So it's very difficult. So the application process is tough, but definitely rewarding. And you learn about yourself a lot, I would say. So as my final question then, do you have any words of wisdom that you would like to bestow upon the audience? Words of wisdom. Um, this one's always stuck with me. It's very cheesy, but um, the get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Life is gonna throw you into so many uncomfortable situations, um, whether they're just because they're new or because it's an uncomfortable situation, maybe because of dangers or risks. Um, but just understand that as long as you approach things, like however you do, whether it's through a process or even just calming yourself down, observing the situation and understanding things like that, you can get through pretty much anything. So I like firmly believe that. And yes, our past summer, like incoming summer here, swab summer was very tough. And there were many times where a lot of my classmates were like, I really don't want to be here anymore. And I'm like, yes, but you're here for a reason. Like, remember that reason. And yes, it's uncomfortable now, but it's temporary. So just understand that there's always light at the end of the tunnel and things get better. So yes, life is tough and yes, uncomfortable at times, but just get through those and you'll be stronger for you, like stronger for it. So I just firmly believe that now and the Academy proves that every single day here. So you're only going to grow. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I, I really appreciate you sharing your experience with the Coast Guard Academy. Again, I have no experience with Academy stuff. So it's really appreciated that you, you talked to us about your experience a little bit and how CAP has kind of helped with you going on that path. I wish you all the best with, with your endeavors into the Coast Guard. Should be awesome. Thank you. You, Thank you're doing you. great. <laughs> okay, so if you, any of, well, do, do you want to be able to answer questions in the comment section? Of course. So, of course. hey, people who are watching to the end of the video, thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you've got questions, she'll answer the questions in the comments. I will, if you have questions, I can try to answer them. <laughs> but I'm not quite the subject matter expert in this one, which is why I brought someone else on board for this video. So if you guys have questions about Coast Guard Academy stuff, then you've, you've got a subject matter expert here who will be able to answer them. Probably not forever, like as of posting this, probably for a little bit, but don't ex expect a response two years from now. This is just currently December 2022 for, for situational awareness, okay? You're not gonna be tracking this like three years from now, probably. You'll, you'll be- enough, But there's always, there's always potential. You never know. I could be across the world. I could be in Alaska. I could be in Florida. You, you know. could be on a boat. Or you could, could be, be flying. On a plane. Yeah, you never know. Are you ready? Bye. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs>